Hey, welcome back everyone to the DTF podcast, Down to Fitness with Dayton McPherson and Kyle Radoon. Kyle, nice to see you again. If you haven't listened to the first episode, make sure that you go back and give that one a try where Kyle and I introduce ourselves, how we get started in fitness. Today, we're going to be talking about personal training and how you begin your career as a personal trainer. What's up, Kyle? What's going on, everybody? How are we doing? Doing well, man. A little cold here in Connecticut. Uh, we got some snow last night, maybe like an inch or two, but nothing crazy. What's the weather like in Florida? Well, I just had to turn my air conditioning off because it was too much noise <laughs> in the background. Uh, it was uh, oh, 89 very degrees. different lives we live, man. I, dude, it's hot here today. Like oh, we did not God. have a winter at all. This is like the only snow that we've gotten so far in Connecticut this year. So I'm I'm okay with that. We'll see if we can keep that up. But we're probably going to get crushed in the next couple of weeks. Snow sounds terrible. <laughs> we didn't even have a frost this year. And that's exciting. Oh, for my me. God. All right. Well, uh, whatever. All right. Let's get started on this episode because I'm done listening to how nice that it is down in Florida. So, yeah. uh, Kyle, getting started as a personal trainer. Uh, let's just give everybody a little bit of a background, how we got started as personal trainers. So how did you get started as a PT? Well, so, uh, for me, I, uh, if you do a little background and I won't go into like my history, my health history here, but I was a little bit overweight. I hired a personal trainer, uh, and the guy was a moron. I mean, it just, just simply put, um, I was way overweight. I had nothing but negative experiences, uh, you know, like I kept putting me on like the floor and making me do moves that like my gut would get in the way. And it was like really embarrassing, stressful. Um, and this is also at a time where like, you know, I was working like minimum wage jobs and I put all my money towards this personal trainer for like, you know, hundreds of dollars I didn't have made me miserable. So I went home and now I didn't have any money for uh, another personal trainer or another gym membership, which by the way, I was locked in for 12 months. So, you know, that, that's how that went forever. Uh, so nothing but a bad experience and I'm just upset. So I went online and I started doing research and just tried to self teach myself, like what's the best way to lose weight. And I fell into the same trap that probably the most gen pop people do. I found diets and shakes and fads and different ways to lose weight. And I tried everything, uh, and really didn't work. I was pretty miserable. Uh, so about two years of stumbling around, I did end up losing like 30, 40 pounds. Uh, but then I was like, you know what? I need to formally learn how to do this stuff and stop trying to teach myself on Google. So uh, <laughs> I actually went to the National Personal Training Institute where I got to go away for nine months and actually do hands-on uh, education for personal training. And this was really cool because there's like a thousand hours of actual experience uh, as well as hitting the textbooks in class. Uh, and if anyone really wants to make a, a full-time career out of being a personal trainer, it's actually one of my ways that I recommend people to do it. Uh, we're going to discuss a little bit on the different certification options. But this one is like, without going to college and getting a degree, this is as good as it gets. And I would make the argument that for experience purposes, uh, this actually trumps the degree because you don't ever get out of a classroom with a degree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was getting to train other trainers and practice and learn what cues worked and what ways to go about it. So that was a really cool thing. Um, so that way, when I went into the gym space, I thought I was ready. I was like, man, I've already trained people. I know all the things. I studied my books. I got an A. Well, <laughs> I didn't have any clients when I got started. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked around and I went, so now what? So they yep. hired me. Now, and they're like, now go, now. go, go, kid, go, yep. go build your business. And I went, yep. um, what, what do you mean? Go, go build who, when's my next appointment? I, oh, my schedule's empty. And so yeah. I'll, I'll stop my story there for now. Cause I know that's yeah. kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit, but yep. what was your path to get into fitness? Yeah. So I, I think ours differ a little bit. I mean, I was relatively fit as a kid. I played a lot of sports. I did martial arts, football, lacrosse. I started off in the weight room when I was 14, 15 years old, just kind of fell in love with exercising and how it helped me on the field, which by the way, if you like exercise, okay. And that's why you got into fitness and personal training, that may not be the best route to go. And we will talk about that in a little bit, but I fell into that trap, like fitness, like personal training, all that. I had a personal trainer in middle or sorry, 
high school and also college because uh, I played sports in, in uh, college. I was on the football team at Assumption. I really wanted to be a doctor when I was little. So when I went to school, started doing um, biology classes in college, realized I was really dumb. Uh, so that didn't really pan out for me. And uh, I then thought about doing physical therapy. Uh, did a little bit of an internship with physical therapy. The facility that I was at had a physical therapy office, but it was also attached to personal training too. So I did like half and half where I did a couple hours of PT and then a couple hours of personal training and just kind of shadowed, fell in love with the uh, personal training, did not like the physical therapy because the people that were there didn't want to be there. Most of those people didn't care about losing weight. They didn't care about exercising. They just wanted to get that thing that they were there for better. And then that was it. And they never went back to the gym, anything like that. The people that were there for personal training, so fun, so great coming in. So I got my certification from the NSCA, started working at uh, Boston Sports Club in Providence. Same thing. With I want to pause you for one second because it's important there that you went to college and got a degree. So most people... <clears throat> that might want to get into fitness that CSCS, you do need a degree. Yeah. So with the NSCA, if you get a CSCS, you, you have to have a four year degree. So if you are really into training athletes, you have to have some sort of four year degree, which is why I picked the NSCA because I thought that that would give me a leg up with getting hired because I had the four year degree and the NSCA tests are the hardest tests out there. And I wanted to take pride in that and be like, I took the hardest test because I'm committed to this and I want to do this and I want to do it well. Like personal training, when you dive into some of those books, if you don't have any background with like biology, cell biology, things like that, the first couple of chapters are relatively hard. You'll talk about everything from energy systems, mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell. All right. You'll learn all of that stuff. But for me, like, that was the easiest part because I had already gone to school for that. So I kind of breezed through that. And then the hard thing for me was like how to build programs, like, you know, percentages, here's what you do for mesocycles, macro cycles, all that stuff. But with those books, which we'll talk about in later episodes, they don't tell you how to get personal training clients, which I think is really, really interesting to think about. So there's a little bit of my story started off there, started to work at Boston Sports Club. And then from there, just started to grow my business a little bit. Yeah, so a pretty different paths because I did not go to a four year college, at least not for fitness. I uh, started to do something else and ended up kind of switching careers. But uh, <clears throat> now besides our two ways, uh, I think it's important just while we're here on the certification kind of degree conversation. Uh, I went to an institute, got hands on experience. Uh, Dayton has a four-year degree uh, and then took a, definitely one of the hardest uh, trainer tests out there, right? Uh, and then you have other options uh, for what most people do, uh, especially if they're kind of didn't know they wanted to be a trainer at you know, 17, 18 years old. Uh, they go and do their certification courses, uh, ACE and NASM being the two top tier, uh, most recognizable. Uh, now, I think at one point, NASM... NASM for a long time was like the go-to. And I kind of recently feel like Ace has kind of taken that over. Do you have a preference to NACE, uh, NACE, NASM or Ace? Yeah, so for me, I, I would say that NASM, that NASM would probably be a little bit better. Typically, when I look at hiring people, I'm going to look at NASM, Ace, NSCA, ISSA, and those are probably the four that I really look for. Anything other than that, you're going to go to the back of like my pile of candidates to to speak to for the most part. What what do you think as like some uh, hiring manager or a manager looking to bring people on to your team? What do you like to see for resumes on there, Kyle? Uh, well, you know, this is one of those tough questions, right? Because we can come back to education or experience uh, and we'll get into a little bit of that too, because experience is going to really trump everything. Uh, I have, I've known some of the best degreed professionals that just couldn't tell you much other than a bicep curl. So, you know, it, it's, it's very hard. Now as educators, I actually like the clean slate, no experience, 
little to no education and just a passion because in as a hiring manager that does education, I know that I can take that clean slate and I can mold you into the best trainer possible. Now, if you if you're fortunate enough to get a job in a place where your your fitness leader is that type of leader, then great. Truth is, most gyms you're going to go into, no one's going to hold your hand and no one's going to bring you up. So in that case, I technically, uh, yes, I would like to see you have a Acer NASM uh, for sure. And then if possible, finding ways to get some experience. Um, so this is something I wanted to talk about, kind of goes along with this is, I like to always ask people too, before you even go the certification route, like, how do you know that you want to be involved in fitness? Because you said you like to exercise, but that never works out the way people think it does. Um, this whole idea no. that like, yeah. you love to, you love to work where you work out type thing is like, it, it's not true. Um, yeah. Some people make that switch and realize they hate it more than anything. And they yeah. just love showing up to the gym and sweating. So, you know, how yeah, did you, and, yeah, go ahead. I, I, what I was going to say is if, if you're one of those people that's a gym rat and like, that's what you want to do in your career, like you want to be a personal trainer because you like exercising, you're a gym rat. It is the worst thing to get into if you're a gym rat, because guess what? Your workouts are going to suffer <laughs> if you like doing that, because the times that you are training clients are the best times for you to exercise. You're going to be working early mornings. You're going to be working during lunchtime and you're going to be working at nights and weekends. So you have to fill in those empty gaps in your schedule where you typically wouldn't have anybody with your workouts. So like for me, like on a Tuesday, if I've got a client in the morning and then I have a meeting, a meeting, 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 client, 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 I can't work out until five, six o'clock at night. I've been at the gym since 5 a.m. The last thing on my mind is staying there for another hour and exercising again. So I actually work out somewhere else than where I train my clients and where I manage. And I, I have to get out of that space. And, you know, I probably used to be the most fit years ago before I became a coach because it's all about helping my team and helping my clients. And then unfortunately, I always put myself last. And that's really hard. So you, you kind of have to get into that mindset when you start that you have to come last if you want to build your your business. And, and that's really hard for people like your clients come first, like if you're just a coach. I think to that point, remember, working out is about as selfish as it is, right? Like you are doing this for you. And so if you love helping yourself and working out, that doesn't mean that you have that you're going to be able to put that same passion on somebody else and get them to love fitness. Because I got to be honest with you, over the years, and I'm not saying that the really love the gym rats can't be good trainers, because that's that's not true. Because if you have that kind of passion, it's possible to be the best trainer in the business. But Absolutely. what we see more often is that that gym rat wants its clients to be as in love with fitness as they are. And that's where they end up falling apart because no one will ever like yeah. fitness as much as you. And you have to understand that going into it. Yep. Um, and then the last part there is not only did you not want to work out after all that day, the gym rats are used to doing two hour plus workouts. So you better mm -hmm. get used to being okay with a 20 minute pump. Yeah, a few days absolutely. Because like, yeah, that's like how we sneak in our workouts. For me, that's what it's been recently is it's like, you know, 20, 30 minutes here. And, you know, I'm always the person that's like 20 minutes is better than no minutes. And it's like, I feel like I can make that work like five to six days a week, which is great. So with the personal training certifications, Kyle, I think you and I are kind of in an agreement with those four. So we want NASM, NSCA, ACE, ISSA. And the other thing that Kyle and I, I think differ a little bit is I will take someone green. Like if you just got out of college and you have those uh, certifications and you have like CPR and AED, I will take you on because you don't have any, <laughs> this is going to sound bad, bad habits with like being a fitness professional. Like if I can take someone that's 20 years old who has those certifications and they want to grind through it, they want to learn the business and you take all the tools that Kyle and I can give you and you run with it, you can be a really good fitness professional. If you're oh, yeah. someone who has worked at 10 gyms and you've learned 10 different sequences on things, it's sometimes hard to break those habits because and I, and I'm not saying that other like managers and clubs are bad. They just have different ways of running their business. So when you come on to a new one, we want you to really absorb the way we're going to teach you things because it works for 
us and our clubs. And just because you were doing something different somewhere else doesn't mean that didn't work there. But what we're teaching you works here and you got to do this for us. So I sometimes like those green, but if I see a resume come through where someone's got 20 years of experience and they want to do full time, they've got tons of certifications. They feel comfortable with cold calls, being here morning, afternoon, nights. Heck yeah, I might take that person and bring them on. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, I, so I want to make sure that I'm clear there too, because I actually like to take on the green people because I am confident in my abilities as a leader and an educator. Mm. I don't think the average person is walking to a gym and stumbling on you and I as their leader. They're just not. No. Um, now, and I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus, but I've worked for a few locations of a giant chain uh, when I left Health Tracks. Um, I worked with four different clubs, four different managers, four different fitness leaders, uh, and I'm sure they'll stumble on this podcast at some point, and I have nothing bad to say about them, but the business itself uh, did not lead to success for their trainers. Their trainer model was hire everyone, and the ones that don't make it, that's fine. Like they'll they'll you know they'll fall off, and the ones that stick around get a couple of free clients from the people that quit and didn't make it. So mm -hmm. they overhire, and they don't put any time, effort, and money into their development, so that they just can never really lose the uh, the labor war there. But the fact of the matter is, is if you find a good studio you find that one person that's passionate about helping people and you kind of can come under there and, and become the, the mentee, if you will, uh, that's an ideal situation. But now if you don't have experience and you walk into, I don't, I don't know, name a, the, the first Globo gym you can think of like anytime <laughs> fitness yeah. or whatever, like you're not getting helped. You're, they're not grooming you that way. Mm. Yeah. So, let, let's talk about once you've gotten your certification. So you go out there and get a cert, like where, where would you apply Kyle? I mean, you could go to studios, orange theories, F 45s, big box gyms, CrossFit. Like how do you determine what's going to be the best start for you once you've gotten that certification? So I have a very strong opinion on this and I have preached this to a lot of people uh, outside of the clubs when I've been working with trainers. And I think you agree with this one. Um, a lot of fitness people think they're going to go out and start their own business. They're going to open up their own studio. They're going to take clients. Now, if you have an opportunity to try that because you don't pay rent somewhere or you have free access to a park and you've got 10 to 15 people willing to pay you right now, then fine. Like, that's cool. That's fun. But what I'm going to tell you right now is that if you can't walk into a major big box gym, 24 hour, anytime fitness, crunch fitness, um, up in New England, you have uh, Edge. Edge. Uh, yep. What what other big ones are out there? Uh, you know, you can name them. But L LA Fitness. LA Fitness. If you yeah. can't go work in one of those gyms and become a six figure trainer in three years or less, you have no business becoming a studio owner. The reason I say that is in a big box gym, they have they're like ten dollar memberships. You get hundreds of people walking in and out of the door every single day. Those people are already looking for fitness. They're already health conscious, at least enough to have paid for a membership and shown up. Mm -hmm. If you want to start a business of your own, you have no names, no marketing, no nothing. You cannot walk into McDonald's and say, excuse me, sir, I think you need to hire me as a trainer because you have some pounds to lose. Yeah, You're going to get punched in the face. Yeah. So the simplest thing ever Go walk into a crunch, get a job, and three days later, you're going to have 10 leads and yep. opportunities to pitch sales and get told no because that's how you're going to get your reps in to eventually learn how to get the yes. Yeah. When you go into those big box studios, like all those ones that we just listed, uh, I think it's important to remember that those are all fine companies. Like we're, we're not going to trash like other companies or other trainers or anything like that. But Kyle's right. You're going to get a ton of leads. And that's the most important thing is the more people that you're in front of, the better and faster that you're going to build your business. And I think it's important to remember as well that when you go into those big boxes, you're now in inside sales. So what I mean by that is all those people walking through the door who have a membership already want to get more fit. So you're just meeting with them to get them more and more fit each time rather than trying to build your business. And you know, you've got a hundred leads as a personal trainer in a studio. Well, those people haven't even walked through your doors yet. 
they don't know what to expect. They don't know the, the cost and the price of personal training and the investment. So that would always be my recommendation is go work at a larger box and, and learn not only from a fitness director, a general manager, but the, the career trainers that have been there for 10 years. And how, how do they have 50 hours of personal training a week? I, ha I have zero. Talk to those people and find a mentor who's going to bring you up and help you in your career. Not all personal training locations are like people trying to steal your clients and like there's a riff between all these personal trainers. I will say that some of those places are like that. Not any of the ones that we mentioned, but some places like they do have that culture. So find a place that's going to help and support you. So anytime that I would apply somewhere, I would go in with like a list of questions like during an interview to them, because as much as they're interviewing you, you have the right to interview them as well about how that they can help you. So certain, certain things that I look for is, you know, KPIs, key performance indexers, like what, what can you give me for information? Number one, how many personal trainers do you have on staff? Of those personal trainers, how many of them are full-time? When is the last time that you hired a personal trainer besides me? How much revenue are you bringing in every single month? If they don't feel comfortable telling you that, that's perfectly fine. It's okay to still ask and they can just say, you know, I, I can't share that information with you. The other thing that I would ask is how many new memberships do you get every single month? If they tell you five, it's going to be really hard building your business. If they tell you a hundred, it's a little bit better. If they tell you a hundred new members joined and they haven't hired anybody in the last year. Guess what? All of those leads coming through the door are basically free range that you can go and talk to those people and not have to like fight over those hundred memberships with 20 different personal trainers. Mm -hmm. The last thing that I was, would ask is what support do I get when I'm here? So they might be like, well, what do you mean? Do we have weekly meetings, team meetings? Do I get one-on-one -on -one time with you? Do we have workshops? Do we have continuing education that we do here? Like build up that brand for yourself to excel in the future like what are all of those things that you're going to give to me where i can be successful here and if they can't give you that information because of the, they either don't have it or they don't know skip that one because all of those managers should know that stuff and if they don't then that's probably not the best place for you i'll get off my soapbox no i uh that was probably my favorite soapbox yet let's just go ahead and say it because um now when I moved down uh, to Florida through COVID, uh, I had obviously no connections, no leads. So I did, to here I am talking about what you should do when you get started. If you're in a new state, in a new place, and you have zero connections and zero leads, you may as well be starting over. So what did I do when I got down to Florida? I joined a big box gym. Yeah. And when I interviewed like five, six of them, I didn't let them interview me. I already know I'm a better trainer than anyone on your staff. And confidence is one of those key traits that you better have if you're going to be any good in this business. So, you know, damn well, when I walk in that room, I was going to be the best trainer there. So there's no reason these people weren't going to hire me. I had to make the best decision for me and my business. So you're not getting interviewed. You're doing the interviewing. And when you ask a manager how much business they do and how many leads and how much opportunity you're going to have to grow your business and they can't tell you, just... <laughs> say, thank you for your time. I will see you later. And you're going to move right on because you need to go to a place that knows, Hey, I got a hundred people walking to the door and I haven't hired a trainer. You're getting everything. And everything that you just said, I could repeat perfectly yeah. because that you, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Like if a coach starts asking me about my business, that to me, like you're already going up in my book, like you understand the business of coaching. It's not just like, oh, yeah, I have a certification. I want to work here. Like if you start asking me those questions, I'm like, wow, this person thinks like a business owner, because even though you're in those big box gyms, you have to manage your own business. You have to own that. That's yours. And it's like, yes, the, the clients do belong to the gym technically. But unless you can really manage that whole aspect of your career, like it, it becomes very challenging for you. 100%. Absolutely. Um, so you're interviewing them, right? So we, we talked about kind of like the numbers and sales and things of where you want to work, but where, what kind of style of gym would you want to work at? So I recommend the big box gym. Uh, you yeah. have studios out there, you know, 
you have you can start your own thing kind of talked about the pros and cons of that um the one thing i will say about the studio is like if you do have a studio that's like a studio owner that's relatively new and you're interviewing them and they have a lot of leads coming in the door and you have some experience i mean this is a kind of an ideal spot for someone that knows what they're doing um just because you have that one-on-one -on -one attention in a studio. But again, the con here is, is if you're not good at sales, you're only going to meet 50 people. If you get 50 no's, you're dead in the water. Big box. Again, I get 50 no's. I could still see another 10,000 people to get 50 yeses. So I think, you know, where you want to work matters. Uh, if you're trying to work online, I think right now, I don't want to spend too much time talking about like these kind of avenues, but uh, if you're an online coach, we can do a whole episode on online branding and marketing and getting out there for online trainers, but it's definitely a, almost a different industry at this point. Um, and especially yeah. post COVID, uh, we can do that all day, but you do not need a degree. You do not need certifications. You don't need no. to really know anything to be an online fitness coach. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. I would still say yeah. you should probably have some experience. Right. So I think if we were going to wrap this episode up with, you know, how to get started as a coach is like, number one, make sure you're getting into it for the right reasons. If you're just a big gym rat and you want to help other people be big gym rats, I don't think that that's the right avenue to start. You're getting into it because you actually have a passion for getting people more fit and you're going to be way more committed than your clients. And just remember that. So there's number one. Number two is find the right certification for you. So Kyle and I recommend NASM. ACE, ISSA, NSCA. Those are the top four that I would recommend. Make sure that you also have a CPR and AED certification. Those are very easy to get. Just go online and find those. Uh, and then after that, I would start applying to larger big box gyms so you can get some experience if you don't have any. Ask them those interview questions like what are some of your KPIs? How many members are you getting? How many coaches do you have on staff? How can you help me grow? And then you can start to select from that grouping of people that you've interviewed for which one is probably going to work better for you, which I think is important. Um, so that's where I would start as a personal trainer that's looking to get into the business. Kyle, do you have anything else that you kind of want to add to that? Uh, no, the only thing I'd say is I think after the certification thing, you can start talking about specialty certifications and other ways to advance your career and educate. But uh, I know we're going to do an episode pretty soon coming up here on uh, advancing your PT career. So I think that was all the just get started. Uh, and there will probably be a hundred more episodes diving into how to get started because I think we could have gone on for uh, a few more of this, yeah, of this series for sure. For sure. So uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, don't forget to uh, follow us for more episodes. See you soon. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Talk to you soon.